Hello everyone, welcome to the video series on uh, EFT automation. Uh, in this video, we will look at object repository as a quick recap uh, as we are preparing uh, and getting into the descriptive programming. So we'll quickly uh, try to understand how object repositories work or you know, I would rather say how UFT uses object repositories. So let, let's take the, our you know, first case where what let's try to understand what happens when you record applications. When you record applications, number one, we know that it generates what code. Code is generated, and when you record, you know, you enter the data. So the code also includes what data now. As you are working with the objects on the application it reads those objects and will try to identify those objects and it will maintain or it would create something called object repository and this is where all the objects are stored you know all the object information object properties and all that are stored there now next what is it we of course you know we record we need an application to record so this is what happens you know you take an application you record the activity here while it's recording while you are working on the application it generates the code and you know creates object repository with all the objects for that action that's what it does so what happens when it runs when you run you know of course it needs to start the application but after that number one it's going to look at the code it'll look at the code if the object is in the object repository then the code needs the line needs to be executed that means it will go to uh, the application to find the object if it is not found then it would pretty much say that application or I means the object not found within the application but it looks at the code and then you know if it says that you know object uh, repo if it does not have the object then obviously you know you know you have a incorrect statement there you you are trying to do something with an object that is not understood by EFT that means it cannot do anything about it so it will fail as well so as you can see it it, it primarily pretty much depends on this thing called object repository it needs all the object repositories or it needs all the information or the of all the objects that you work with in its object repository without that EFT will become clueless that means it has to know the information of the objects to work with right I mean without object repository it will just fail of course I mean we do have type of object repositories you know one is local and the other is shared object repository and you know we we already looked at you know local is local to each action you know shared is you know you can share across multiple actions across multiple test cases across multiple systems that means the whole testing team can use one shared repository of, of the network so anytime there's an update all you have to do is update that shared repository and it's you know done that means you know the whole uh, I mean you know all the machines get updated because you're using the same shared repository file so this is how you know uh, I would say and this is um, traditional I wouldn't say traditional but you know it's it's that's how you start off with you know you used object repositories but when it, when, you know, now because we are slowly getting into uh, 
getting into de descriptive programming, let us understand what are the challenges with uh, object repositories. Number one, as I just said, going from local to shared, you know, pretty much it has its advantages because you can have one file shared across multiple systems. That's a big, huge advantage. Now, what's the what are the disadvantages? Number, uh, does that mean to say what are the disadvantages of using object repositories? One is, you know, when object repositories could become soon become larger. I mean, they, the the bigger the object repository, you know, the performance will be a little bit slower. That's one. Number two, maintenance becomes a little bit uh, difficult. You know, other than that, you know object repositories are just fine. However, there are practical issues as well, you know, in real time. Say, for example, if the application is not ready yet, there's no way you can use object repository because, you know, if application is not ready, if they're still developing it, and but you're supposed to write uh, the test cases without looking at the application, right? I mean, it, it is uh, difficult. That's where descriptive programming will come in and address those kind of issues. That means the testing and the dev team can start coding and QA team in parallel can start, you know, developing the test cases using descriptive programming. And you cannot use object repositories because object repositories cannot be built without the application. You need the application to build object repository. And without that, you cannot write uh, run any test case. But with descriptive, you can do that. So now that's the basic introduction into object repositories and you know, I would rather say just quick recap. And now you know what we'll do is in the next video we will uh, get into you know a windows based application you know we'll use the same um, sample application we'll dive more into the properties and uh, we'll understand properties of the application and then we'll slowly get into descriptive programming use for, for windows based application okay well thank you and i will talk to you in the next video